Not bad. Got me hair cut earlier. Hope everyone's doing good, guys. So we're back from Eastbourne and Brighton now, and um, we've just been sorting stuff out this week because we've got the the motorhome trip, which is basically our motorhome trip to south of France, happening. So there's been a lot of stuff to sort out, so much stuff to prepare. Like we're taking the dogs as well, so we've had to sort out all things for those. They've got to have passports and just all this kind of crazy stuff that you don't think of when you have this bright idea. Let's get a motorhome and go to the south of France. It'd be amazing. But I have had time. Yesterday I was, I was kind of messing around in here, wasn't filming, and I did have time to sort of make a few changes to my power system that I'm going to take. So basically the motorhome, it's, it's a normal motorhome, it's got normal hookups and stuff like that. I'm not sure if it's got an inverter in there yet, so I'm still yet to find out what it has got and what it hasn't got. But basically I want to take a couple of power systems away with us. Um, so that we can actually run some stuff, um, you know, if we're not hooked up. We will be hooked up because we've got like a, um, we've booked like a campsite type thing to stay in for one night, um, which is going to break our journey up. So we're going halfway, six hours, we're going to stop somewhere. I can't even remember the name of the campsite, but basically we're going to stop there and then we're going to do like the next six hour stint um, after that. So what I want to do today is I want to show you what I've done with this power system. You know the power system that I've done. I've done a couple of videos on it before. It started out as the power system or the power wall thing that I had to run in this shed. But since then, obviously things have kind of expanded and I've now got the, the big system down here to the right of me. So I still use this mini power pack system for just normal stuff around the house and around the garden if I can't be bothered to get an extension lead out, things like that. So let's dive in and I'll show you what I've done. <laughs> Right, here we go then guys, this is it. This is what we're talking about. So this is the power system. We've got batteries in here, it's a battery box. Um, we've got an inverter at the bottom, um, which you just can turn on, on and off by that. And then um, we've got a Victron meter on the front that shows you the voltages. And this, which you haven't seen before, is a charger, which is just a simple RC kind of radio control charger, but it's built into this box now. So I've actually fixed this charger inside. And the main reason for doing that is so that I don't have to have a separate charger, obviously, and everything's in this box. And basically, it just has a power supply, which is running from there. So this is a Maplin power supply. Rest in peace, Maplin. I say with a tear in my eye. Um, but that is running off of my solar system. So basically, this is charging from my solar panels, which are actually on my roof over there. So this should be capable of about a thousand watts, maybe a little bit more because the inverter, it can handle like a little bit more just for kind of startup currents and things like that. So yeah, it's about a thousand watts anyway, um, which should be enough for, for little things. So tucked away behind here, I've got a little induction kettle and a little induction hob, which is also Maplin. Now we might not even need this in the motorhome to be completely honest because we're not staying kind of consecutive nights in the motorhome and we're only doing one night and we're, we're not going to be off grid really. Um, we might actually be off grid if we kind of decide to stop somewhere um, where we haven't planned. So, you know, maybe this will be something that we can use. But I wanted to try this out in a real life situation anyway because I thought it'd be quite interesting for, um, you know, to see how well it actually handles. So the charger is obviously hardwired and everything to directly to the BMS inside here. So, you know, there's nothing that can go wrong if this decides to try and overcharge things so let's start charging it because this battery needs to be charged up a little bit more um, I'm thinking if you look at the voltage 14.3 um, it's climbing up quite quickly there but if you look at that it's that's quite low for a four cell lithium pack so a four cell lithium pack would be 16.8 um, when it's fully charged now remember what I was saying about the um, the inverter that I've got, it can only handle about 15 and a little bit. Um, I'm not sure the exact voltage, but I did keep cranking the voltage up and seeing what point it cut off at one point. I just can't remember what, what it was now. Um, so it's a bit of a pointless test really, but I feel like it's around 15 volts. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna charge up to 15 volts, which will probably be about 75% or something of the, um, the batteries that I've got in here, that kind of charge level. And then I'm gonna try and run some tests and just run some things around the house and just see what um, see what happens. So we've got a little way to go yet. It's still going to take a little while to charge So we'll leave this and then and see what happens in a little while while it's doing that I'll show you this because this is quite interesting. This is showing you what's going in from that charger So this is real-world um, current sort of going in um, charge current So this is actually probably going to be a bit more accurate than um, that. So that's saying 3.5 And that's showing about 3.2. So there's a little bit of a little bit difference there 46 watts going in. These are 50 watt chargers, so you know that's probably probably about right. A few inefficiencies and stuff like that. Now this is actually reset to zero, so your state of charge should be like 100%. 
I need to reconfigure this because it isn't that isn't actually strictly true because uh, obviously you know it's saying that there's it's fully charged and it's it's not actually fully charged at all um, we've got top voltage the pack is split into two parts we've kind of gone into this before in the in the last video about this so you've got two um, two packs basically two two s packs which are connected in series it's all one pack basically guys but I've, I've taken like a top and a bottom um, tap on the well it's basically just one way you just connect on this Victron um, battery gauge and it allows you to monitor the midpoint and then of course because it can monitor the midpoint it means it can monitor the top uh, the top and the bottom so you can get a difference between the top and the bottom there which you see it's hardly any difference it's very close the total is 0.3 percent and 0.02 volts that is really useful to see if any problem is going to occur. You can set an alarm on this meter, so if this deviates up to like 1% or beyond, you get a notification, this will bleep. It will start notifying you things by Bluetooth as well. So it's a really good way of monitoring things, making sure the battery, when it's under load and stuff, it isn't, isn't gonna you know, go wildly out of balance and you're, not, you're gonna have to worry about that after. There's a BMS in here, but I'm not discharging for it. I'm actually just charging through the BMS. So all we're doing with discharge is just going through some whacking great 200 watt fuse that I've got in there. So this is quite essential to make sure you know it's not monitoring every cell you know it's not it's not doing anything like that but it's it's enough on a four cell pack i think um to see if you know things are starting to sort of go a bit go a bit wonky but so far so good you know i've checked the individual voltage of these cells in this pack all four uh all four banks and they're within 0 0.000 whatever it, it, they're basically in balance so all in all i think it's a tidy little setup really um you know this is pretty portable you know I'm picking it up virtually with one hand I've just used these straps um, over the top just to just to secure it and if you come around this side you can see um, we've got the mains main power wires which are pretty hefty good for about 100 or so amps um, and then that switch doesn't do anything that was for another for something else the wires go in here it's like strain relief on that so that doesn't um, affect anything but yeah I reckon um, I reckon this should work pretty well so we'll see what happens so bearing in mind this is like a 45 amp hour pack if i'm charging this at 3.5 amps even though it's not completely discharged it's going to take blimmin ages so i'm going to have to wait until this gets up to a, um, a decent level and then we can start testing it on some stuff right guys so as always i can't remember what videos i've done about these things before and what i've actually covered so if you want to know what's inside the box go and check this um, video out DIY portable mains pack power anywhere it's a couple of videos before this one um, it shows you everything that's in there like the BMS is there and you know everything else so go and do that because I'm not going to go into that again I was wondering whether to open the box again and show you what's inside but I've already done it all right it's still going 14 and a half about 14 and a half volts so that's about 3.6 volts a cell so we've still got a while to go um, you know on a four cell pack this thing's quite good actually I'll mention this now on here you can actually set your maximum capacity so what you can do is you can limit this to um, how much capacity you want to put in which is good for safety because if you know how much you've taken out you can roughly just set the meter on here to say like 10, 10 amp hours or whatever and then start this off and then when it gets to 10 amp hours it will just stop so it's quite a good um, charger these chargers are pretty much the same you can get them anywhere they're just uh, sort of cheap things like 30 quid or something uh, it might be even cheaper now and um, you can just use it for stuff like this just great as a standalone thing and it, it kind of looks cool don't you think i moved it near now so i can keep an eye on it whilst it's charging still got a little way to go right it's a bit later now I told you it was going to take ages now you can see on here it's only saying 6000 that's because i've stopped and started it a couple of times because of that thing i was saying before where when it hits 10,000, it stops and i haven't bothered to change it so I think we've probably put in about 20, probably 20 amp hours or something. It's been going all day, so um, it's getting a bit warm as well. This hasn't really got a lot of ventilation, so it's one thing you've got to watch for these things because they do get pretty hot. But anyway, the bit you've been waiting for, let's try on some stuff. So you can see now the charger's off, it's gone down to like 14.89, so it's still not really charged enough. All right, what can we try then? GHDs? they're working what are we taking out so about 13 amps going out just to warm these bad boys up not too bad it's 
what does the weight say? Say 200, 200, or say what? So that's just showing they've heated up. Oh, yeah, they're pretty hot. Gotta sort my quiff out. Right, what's next then? I don't think this is gonna work, but coffee machine. I think that takes about 1500 watts, so that's probably gonna be out of the question, but we'll give it a go. You can see it's on standby, it's like 0.4 of an amp, so that's how much current the inverter's drawing, just, just sitting there not doing anything. So you don't wanna be leaving this on because it will drain, will drain the battery, but coffee machine's plugged in. I've got a feeling this is just gonna trip out, but we'll give it a go. Whoa, something's happening. Yeah, we've got a red light on there. It's basically too much for it. It's too much for it. I knew, kind of knew that anyway. It's like a heater, isn't it? So next up, we've got Maplin Special Inductor here with a, well, it's an induction hob actually, with um, an induction kettle. And I've got just about one cup of water in there, which is enough to do like one cup of coffee, obviously. So we'll plug that in, give it, give it a try. So if you just put it on high, this is 500 watts. So this thing will just, you know, it doesn't go any higher than 500 watts. And you can see up here, now it's on. It's probably in 38 amps from the um, from the system. So you've got 500 watts going out. So it's what it is. It says what it actually is. It's a 500 watt um, heater uh, induction hob, and it's actually pulling 504 watts. So there you go. And if you go back to the other screen there, you'll see, so 40 amps. There's quite a bit of current going out of this battery so it's probably going to get a little bit a little bit warm but it's not near the limits so we'll see how long that actually takes to to boil that water now as i was saying before what you've got to watch on this is, is the actual voltage of it so you can see we're 12.9 which is you know that's three three point something a cell so you know that's that's okay that's fine if it goes to but if it goes down to lower than 12 volts that's going to be bad um, but as you can see 40 amps still going out roughly 500 watts and then this is the total amp power that we've used so far, just on all these little experiments. So you can see that's going up pretty quick now because we're pulling quite a bit of power at it. Um, go to the next one. Um, what was I looking for? Oh yeah, so your top and your bottom voltages, which is showing you how stable the battery is um, when it's been put under load. So we've got a 0.6 cent difference there, but that's only 0.04 of a volt. So even under load, like, it's not actually the cell voltages are, are pretty much pretty much staying intact, which is good. Which is what you want. I love this stuff. I don't think it's going to whistle because there's not enough water in it. But there you go. That works. Right. So just coming to the spare bedroom, we've got this GHD hairdryer, which is only like a. I don't even know what this is. Let me check. So I don't know if you can see this. This is like a thousand watt to fourteen hundred watt hairdryer, just on that little label there. Um, but let's give it a go. I just tried this and it didn't work, but I want to try something and I want to show you something. So if we look at the voltage, that's the voltage there, 14.5. So it's come down a little bit. If we look at the current there, and then if we switch this hairdryer on, now expecting this to trip out, but just briefly watch that current meter and watch how high it goes. So it goes up to about 100 amps, then cuts off. And then you get this kind of alert on there. So let's turn that off again. Now, if we go back to the voltage, 14.57, and then let's try it again and see what happens with the voltage. Because what I'm reckoning is the voltage is dropping and that's what's making it trip off, not the actual power of the, um, you know, not the high power of the hairdryer. So let's just prove that. Right, so turn the hairdryer on. So it goes down to about nine volts there and then it actually shuts off. So I reckon that's the low voltage cutoff of the inverter rather than the actual batteries. Obviously we don't wanna go near nine volts on the batteries either. So what I'm wondering is if we charge this battery more, maybe take it up to like 15 and a half volts, hopefully this inverter will still be in its kind of operating range. It might actually work. So guys, it's interesting stuff, isn't it? Um, I've put it back on charge now and I'm gonna take the voltage a little bit higher, but I don't think I'm gonna bother doing any more tests because I think realistically 100 amps is probably too much for this battery pack that I've got um, to run any, anything continuous. So I think that's where the problem's gonna be. Um, adding more voltage and charging it up is going to be better because it, it means the voltage is higher of the battery and it hasn't it's got less distance to, to kind of fall it won't fall into that nine volt area where the where the inverter will cut off i mean what i could do is i could actually use my victron inverter if i was to, could be bothered to remove it from that setup um, and put it on the back of this 
and then I could actually charge these batteries up to their full um, charge voltage, which is like 16.8, because those Victron um, inverters run up to, I think it's 17 volts, so that would be perfect. That would be what to do if you wanted to get the maximum amount of power out of it, but then that's only an 800 watt inverter, so you kind of, um, you know, it swings and roundabouts. I think this setup is good, it's good enough. Um, we've tested it on a few different things. I kind of, I've done this before, so I kind of know um, what it works on and what it doesn't work on. Um, it runs the soldering station fine, actually. That's another thing that works on it. Yeah, generally stuff like the little induction hob, that works fine. Stuff like that, like charging laptops, charging um, skateboards, charging all these other things that I've got that, that kind of take a bit of power, but just not too much. Yeah, so I think it's a great little general purpose power pack, really. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, showing a little bit more about the power pack and, you know, in preparation for the motorhome. Um, the motorhome stuff's going to happen, like, we've got the big trip planned. Don't know what I'm going to film, don't know how I'm going to film it, edit it, whatever, but basically I think I'm just going to take some video clips and, and just see where, see where we kind of go with it. Um, we want to treat it as a bit of a break as well, but there's going to be some wicked scenery, so I'm really hoping to get some, uh, get some shots done of all that. Yeah, so anyway, guys, before this plane comes over the top and just completely destroys my audio, I'll catch you in the next video.